Monmouth County Virtual Library. We are delighted to have you with us this morning for What's New to Medicare in 2025. We'll learn about en enrollment, the components of Medicare, options for coverage, related programs, and more. Our presenter, Janae Farley, is the Director of Volunteer Services at, Mo at Family and Children's Services in Long Branch. She's presented for the library many times in the past, speaking on a variety of topics, and we are thrilled to have her with us again today. A quick reminder to visit the library's website to sign up for our electronic newsletter for updates on virtual programs and in-person library services and events. Now, let's get started. Welcome Janae and Natasha, who is the technical backup today. Hello, and thank you so much. I'd like to thank the Monmouth County Library, Manalapan, for hosting this beneficial presentation. What's new with Medicare in 2025? Thank you. I'd like to acknowledge Natasha Bishop. She is the uh, volunteer coordinator for our volunteer services department. So I'd like to acknowledge Natasha. Um, thank you so much for assisting today in the presentation. Hello to everyone. I'm going to ask if you would just grab your cup of coffee, get a notebook, a pen. Uh, we have a lot of information for you today. So um, if you, as stated, if you'd like to ask questions, please put your questions in the chat and we will do our best to answer them um, at the end of the presentation. Again, welcome and thank you for joining us. Uh, we are going to start. What's new with Medicare in 2025? Thank you, Natasha. Okay, so we're going to first talk about the Social Security Cost of Living Adjustment, known as COLA. In 20, for 2025, there will be a 2.5% increase in benefits. Um, in 2024, there was a 3.2%. Um, and if you recall, if you're wondering, okay, how is this calculated? If you look at your social security and if you get the amount deducted from your check, last year, I think it was 174.70. I know it was in like 160 something the year before. So that's uh, what the how the COLA increase is determined. It will be a 2.5 increase on that amount or whatever amount you were paying. Okay, and you'll understand that a little bit more as we move further into the presentation. The average retirement benefit amount will increase $49 per month. Okay, again, the average, because you'll see later on, it depends on what you are paying currently, and it's not necessarily the same for everyone. Thank you. All right, let's review the basics of Medicare. Medicare has four parts. As you already know, there's a part A and B. Part A is our hospital insurance. Part B is the medical insurance. Part C is the Medicare Advantage, which is like an HMO or PPO. And part D is the Medicare prescription drug coverage. So if you're not sure, and I try to do this um, with each of my presentations because I realize there are some people who actually, some seniors who actually don't realize, what, don't know what they have, okay? Um, so if you have a Part A and a Part B, it will say that on your Medicare card. It will say Part A, it will say Part B. If you have a Medicare Advantage plan, it will say HMO or PPO, and it will say Medicare Advantage. Now, usually if you have Part A and B, you will have a Social Security card, you have your um, insurance card, you most likely will have a Medigap, which is a supplemental insurance card, and a Part D card. If you have Medicare Advantage, you will have most likely one card because Medicare Advantage usually includes Part D. So that's just one key in knowing whether you have a Medicare original, traditional, or if you have an advantage. So 
Each part of Medicare has different rules for enrollment, different monthly premiums, different deductibles, and different cost sharing for services. So your monthly premium is the amount that you pay monthly for your um, insurance program, okay? So your deductible is the annual amount that you would pay, your deductible you pay it is before any benefit is paid out. Absolutely, yes, Hal, before any benefit is paid out, your, your deductible has to be paid and it is an annual amount, okay? So once it's paid, it's paid. So coinsurance is normally 20% of what the Medicare allowable amount does not cover, okay? Now, if you have a Medigap or a supplemental insurance, or if you're a part of an employee health plan, you may have that cost, that co-insurance covered, okay? And we'll go further into that as we go into the presentation. Your copay is what you would pay according to your coverage, what you would pay to see a doctor, um, a chiropractor, um, lab work. So in different plans have different copays, okay? So now we know the difference between the monthly premium the deductible, and cost-sharing co-insurance and copay. Let's dive into this a little bit further. Twenty twenty-five original Medicare. Now, this is original Medicare. Your Part B cost. Now, the premiums are to be determined. Okay. Again, to be determined. As of today, I still have not gotten the, the update on this amount. But in 2024, someone said 174. You were correct. 174.70. And again, you'll see in a few minutes that that really is contingent upon, um, up, upon you and you know your income. And we'll talk about that in a few moments. The annual deductible was 200 was $240 in 2024. That will change also. And you will see that in a few moments. Co-insurance, as I stated, 20% for most Part B services. Now let's talk about excess charge. This is why it's very important to make sure that you go to a doctor that, has, uh, that accepts the Medicare assignment a Medicare allowed amount because an additional 15% coinsurance for providers who do not accept Medicare allowed amount as payment in full or the assignment, okay? So if you are going to a provider or a doctor who does not accept that amount, then there is an excess charge of 15%, okay? Now, and I stated this, if you have a Medicare supplement policy, a Medigap, or have retiree health benefits from employ employer, for example, the state, um, for example, you know, um, unions, different unions, um, railroad, I'm just naming a few. Um, if you have benefits from them, that usually covers some or all of your Medicare Part A and Part B cost sharing. Okay, now this will help you. This is a visual of what I've been saying and speaking. And I don't know about you, but I'm definitely a visual person. We all learn differently. Um, someone says, I don't understand the excess charge. So the excess charge comes in if you go to a doctor who is, does, is not on uh, the Medicare assignment. In other words, they do not accept Medicare, the allowed amount or the assignment then you would be charged an additional 15% co-insurance. That's the most they can charge you. That's why it's important to make sure that you are going to a doctor 
who accepts Medicare, okay? Not all doctors accept Medicare. And if you are in a Medicare Advantage plan, you have to go within your network. In other words, the PPO or the HMO. So that's what the that 15% excess comes from. If you're going to a doctor that does not accept Medicare, they can charge you an additional 15%. Okay, if we're looking at this chart, if you as an individual filed your tax return and it was $105,000 or less, and usually if I'm in person, I get a lot of chuckles on that. Um, if it was 105,000 or less, and if you filed joint 210,000 or less, you were paying the 174.70. Now you'll understand why I said it depends. So it is contingent, the COLA increase is going to be contingent upon what you were paying um, you know, last year. So if you filed individual and you your tax return says 105,001 to 131,000 or filing joint 210,001 to 262,000 then you were paying 24460 okay and then you it continues from there so the premium you pay per month for part B in 2025 will be determined upon the amount that you paid for Part B in 2024. Annual enrollment period. What happens if your income changes the next year, especially um, decreases? Then, you know, you report that. Um, and once that is reported, uh, then you report it to Social Security and because they see it and then it changes, okay? Annual enrollment for people with Medicare. So from October 15th, which is already passed, to December 7th, you can um, do the following. You can join or switch a Medicare prescription drug plan. And we're going to talk about that again uh, further also. And some of your questions, remember, some of your questions may be answered as we go through the PowerPoint, okay? So from October 15th to December 7th, you can switch a Medicare prescription drug plan, join or switch a Medicare Advantage plan. So time to shop and compare health and drug plan choices. So you want to ask yourself some questions, okay? Um, a time It's time to shop and compare your drug and your health plan choices. I tell people, do your homework. Make sure, thank you so much, Natasha. She just posted the SHIP hotline for Monmouth County. You call that number and you can make an appointment with one of our counselors, okay? When you make the appointment, it's important to have with you your doctors, the doctors that you, um, you're welcome, the doctors that you go to, um, your prescriptions. Why is it important to have that? Because different plans have different formularies. And we'll talk a little bit more about that, drug formularies. Not all plans cover the same drugs. Not all plans have the same doctors. Okay, and again, we're going to get more into this, the difference between traditional, original, and um, uh, Medicare Advantage. You're going to see some very stark differences in a few minutes. So it's important to see which plan is best for you. What does that mean? I tell people all the time, if your friend says to you, oh, this, you know, Braven is great, or Horizon is great, or AmeriHealth is great, it may be great for them but it may not be great for you because you may have different needs. You may have a, you know, um, have different um, issues that you may, may be facing. You may be on different medications. So just because a plan works for someone does not mean that it's going to work for you. So make sure that you are, you know, looking at what is best for you, best cost, best coverage. Choose the plan that fits your needs. 
and coverage begins on January 1st, 2025. You'll have your membership cards and materials in hand. Here's something very important to note. You are locked in to your Part D plan for all of 2025 once open enrollment period ends. There are some exceptions and we will go over them as we move forward. So you want to make sure, that's why I said you want to make sure that you have your list of medications and the counselors know how to put it into the tool and the tool will give the plans that best fits your needs. Okay, we go through this. You're going to see this over and over because we want to give you visuals. So original Medicare, part A, hospital insurance, part B, medical insurance. Now with part A and B, you have you can have a Medicare supplement insurance, also called a Medigap policy or a retiree group health plan. Someone asked me, what if I don't have that? Then that co-insurance, remember we talked about that earlier, that the Medicare supplement insurance would cover, you don't have that and you would have to pay that out of pocket. So that's why you would want to have a Medigap or a Medicare supplement insurance. And we're going to go back to that soon. And also, if you have original Medicare, you will have Part D, prescription drug plan or credible drug plan. What's a credible drug plan? Best example I can give is the military. If you are a veteran, your plan, your health plan is considered a credible drug plan, okay? That's original Medicare or traditional. Now let's look at Medicare Advantage plan, HMO or PPO, Part C it's considered. And it combines Part A, Part B, and usually Part D. The reason, again, it says usually is because there are some plans that, and you and I've seen that a lot of them are specific to veterans. Some plans do not have a Part D. Um, and again, it's because some have credible drug coverage, okay? So, but for most likely, and for the most part, most of Part C, Medicare Advantage plans, combine part A, B, and D. What if I'm happy with my current plan? Well, hey, then you are the lucky one. <laughs> okay, if you are happy with your current plan, um, make sure that your plan is still offered next year. There are some plans that are ending. You want to make sure your premium amount is, is not changing. You want to ask yourself, is the deductible amount changing? Is the coverage for my medication still on the plan formulary? I spoke about that a few moments ago. Every plan has a drug formulary and not all medications are on the formulary. Okay. You also want to ask, are the co-pays uh, for medications, has that changed? So all of this can be done by using the tool, which we will show you, give you the opportunity to um, go in yourself and do that. Or I encourage you to call and make an appointment with one of the SHIP counselors. Compare your plan with other plans available. You may be able to find a cheaper plan to save money. Now, we were in a, a live presentation. One of the things I always say is cheaper doesn't necessarily mean better. I want to warn you or just give you, you know, this advice, urge you to please make sure you do your due dil diligence. Make sure you're looking at your premium amounts, your deductible amounts, that your medications are covered. Because if it's cheaper and your medications are not covered, that's going it, to, it's just going to, not be effective for you. And actually it won't be cheaper in the long run. Um, if your doctors are not on, do not accept Medicare, or if your doctors are not on that plan, it may be cheaper, but are you willing to change doctors? Okay. So I like to share that information because that way you are making an educated decision on your health plan, choosing your health plan. Okay. Now, 
If you decide to stay with your current plan, no action is needed. Hey, okay. You will be automatically re-enrolled for 2025 if your plan is still offered. Big 2025 Part D benefit changes, okay? So these are huge changes. And I am going to try my best to explain them the best way possible. <laughs> okay, um, the Inflation Reduction Act, Act, IRA, simplified the Part D structure by eliminating the coverage gap donut hole. That is actually a great benefit to seniors. 2025 Part D benefit will have three phases. You have your deductible phase, which is a 590 max. You have your initial coverage phase, and you have your catastrophic phase, which is now zero cost sharing. Once people with Medicare meet the out-of-pocket drug spending cap, which is $2,000 in 2025, they will move directly from the initial coverage phase to the catastrophic phase. And in a moment, I'll show you um, a chart that's gonna show you exactly what that looks like and what a huge, huge um, benefit this is. The, another change is a change to what costs count towards true out-of-pocket costs. And we'll go through that. Another change is the option to enroll in a Medicare prescription payment plan. Okay, let's look at the changes. All right, Part D standard benefit. Again, this is Part D that we are talking about now. Maximum deductible in 2024 was $545, and now in 2025, it is $590. Initial coverage period, the member cost sharing, okay? That's what the initial coverage period is. The coverage gap was eliminated. So everything I just said, this is showing you on the chart. So the coverage gap, which used to be $5,030 in total drug costs, um, triggered the coverage gap. But now that has been eliminated. Out-of-pocket maximum used to be $8,000. Now it is $2,000, okay? Once you reach the $2,000 out-of-pocket maximum, you go into the catastrophic phase cost sharing, which is zero, zero. Okay. Now, what counts towards the $2,000 out-of-pocket cap? The deductible paid by the member. So that deductible that you saw goes towards the $2,000 out-of-pocket cap, the 590, the deductible. All co-pays at the pharmacy paid by the member for drugs covered by the plan. Remember, now you'll see how things that I'm saying will connect. You know how I keep saying the drug formulary. So if you have a prescription that is not on the drug formulary and you pay for it out of pocket, that copay will not go towards your $2,000 out of pocket because it is not covered by the plan, okay? So I want to keep um, encouraging you to see the importance of having, of making sure that your medications, the best you can, because of course, if your medications change or if you get a new medication, that's something you have no control over. But the ones that you are currently taking, you can report those and show, you know, and find the best um, plan for you. Okay. So the deductible paid is, is included. Co-pays at the pharmacy is included for drugs covered by the plan. Okay, we'll come back to that. Supplemental benefits paid by enhanced plans. 
there okay so there are plans without a deductible on some some or all tiers so some plans don't have a deductible right there are plans that have cost sharing less than 25 percent on higher tiers so enhanced plans there are plans that have tiers okay and not all of them not all the plans have uh the deductible plans without a deductible on some or all or tiers that's what an enhanced plan is Okay, if you have tiers, I, I've heard people say they have one, two, three, four. Some people have one, two, and three. So um, that's what an enhanced plan is. Plans without a deductible on some or all of the tiers. Costs paid by NJPAD and NJ Senior Goal, they do count. Forgive me. They do count. Okay. Um, the tiers, you have to review that with your... Because we don't, I can't, I don't know all the plans. Only, um, all the plans are different. Um, some plans don't have tiers. Like if you don't have a plan that has tiers, then you would see it because it says tier one, tier two, tier three, tier four. It was said on your card. That's one thing that I do know. I learned that from um, looking, I actually had to look at someone's uh, card so that I can see it for myself. So if you have a tier, uh, plans without a deductible on some or all tiers. So all the tiers don't have deductibles. So you can have a tier one, two, say for instance, tier one and two don't have deductible, but tier three and four may have a deductible. So I hope I'm, I'm, that breaks it down um, a little bit. So yeah, it it's really depends on the plan you have and you have to go over that with the plan itself because there's there's over 80 different plans, unfortunately. Okay. Now, what does not what does not count toward the 2000 cap? So the monthly premium does not count. We said it already, but any drug not on the plan's formulary, it does not count. And we're repeating it because, you know, it we're saying it in different ways so that hopefully we're all able to grasp it. And any drugs filled at a non-network pharmacy. So what does that mean? So when you pick your plan, some plans have network pharmacies. So for example, CVS can be your a network pharmacy. Rite Aid can be a network pharmacy. Walgreens can be a network pharmacy. Okay, so if you were to get a prescription filled outside of the plan's network pharmacy, that will not count towards your $2,000 out-of-pocket um, amount. Okay, it's a lot of a lot of information, and you have to really go over it. Like I said, I have to go. I learn something from each presentation that I do, and hopefully, this um, explains it well. Natasha, okay. Now, New Jersey Medicare drug plans. There are fifteen drug plans available. The average premium is $62, okay? And as I said, some of your questions also may get asked along the way, answered along the way. So for example, Mutual of Omaha, all three plans are ending. Members will need to enroll in another Part D plan. If that is you, you have a special enrollment period. That's what SCP means to choose until February 28th, 2025. If that, if you have Mutual of Omaha and your plan is ending, you have a special enrollment period. Many plans are merging. Many plans are moving members. Some will see, unfortunately, significant premium increases. So we have some examples here. AARP Walgreens from United Healthcare moved to Saver Plan. That premium is increasing from $54 to $89. Aetna Silver Script Smart Saver and Silver Script Plus members will move into Silver Script Choice. Smart Saver members will see premium increases from $12 to $47. Again, that's why we encourage you to go, you know, to make an appointment so that you can shop and compare. The lowest premiums, 
are right now well care value script. You can see for yourself Cygnus Saver RX and Humana Basic RX. And you can see the costs for those. Um, and of course, we are not promoting any of them. Again, you have to do your due diligence and find out which plan is best for your needs. Clear Spring plan is still under sanction by CMS. Can members, if you're already enrolled, you will stay in it, but you um, new members cannot be enrolled. All right. Okay, so let's talk about the MPPP, the new Medicare Prescription Payment Plan. It was actually available last year, but um, it's really just be, people are just becoming more aware of it. So effective January 1st, 2025, all Medicare Part D and Medicare Advantage plan members have the option to pay out-of-pocket drug co-pays in monthly installments. Okay, now I'm going to take my time because this can be confusing also. So, and, and they can pay, you can pay um, drug co-pays in monthly installments instead of all at once at the pharmacy. The Medicare prescription payment plan will not lower total out of cost pocket uh total out of pocket costs but will spread out the payments over the calendar year okay let me break it down a different way the MPPP plan will not lower that two thousand dollars that is your out of pocket cost it's not going to lower that but it will spread it out over a calendar year and we'll show it to you in a a, a chart in a few moments who will benefit from this this plan um, this plan will assist enrollees with high cost sharing early in the calendar year. Those who will hit the $2,000 maximum out of pocket by September or earlier, okay? Or those with at least $600 in drug costs in any one month, okay? So if you have $600 of drug costs in any one month, this payment plan may benefit you. MPPP will not benefit those who already get cost-sharing help from LIS, low-income subsidy, extra help, NJ Pad, NJ Senior Goal, or New Jersey Family Care Medicaid. Now, this is what it looks like as an example in the, on a chart, in case you're visual like I am. So your monthly cost without a payment plan, because remember, the cost sharing is $2,000. That is the deductible, right? So January is the deductible, for example, $721. As you see, February, 287, 67, March, April, May, June, that's your transition month. That means that's the month you hit the $2,000. And then from July through December, you're paying zero because you've already met the $2,000 cost sharing. Now let's look at it in comparison if you go uh, to going on the payment plan. Okay, your monthly cost with payment plan. Do you see the difference? It's broken down monthly, okay, but it still equals out to the same $2,000. So it's not lowering the $2,000. It's just you're paying your monthly costs with the payment plan maybe less than what you would have to pay out of pocket each time you went to the, um, to the pharmacy, okay? So these numbers can change. And so if we were in person, I'd say, how do you, what do you think would change it? But we're going to look at what would cause these numbers to change, your monthly uh, cost with the payment plan. Natasha? All right. Um, let's look at this first. Could you go back one, please, Natasha? Because I'd like to make another point. Thank you. So, because I thought it went to this next. But so if your drugs change, that would be one of the reasons why the amount would change. 
whether maybe some drugs you don't take anymore, medications you don't take anymore, or there may be medications that are added to your you know, medication list. Either adding or subtracting would change those numbers. Okay, just wanted to throw that in there so you would understand. Okay, thank you, Natasha. Okay, new link on plan finder for Medicare prescription payment plan. You can do everything we just spoke about yourself if you uh, by going to the Medicare plan finder tool on www.medicare.gov, okay? And it will have a link to the MPPP cost preview on the plan details page. Now, you can do that, or as I stated earlier, you can call the SHIP hotline and request an appointment with a SHIP counselor free of charge. Prescription payment plan, how to enroll in MPPP. Contact your Part D or Medicare Advantage plan by phone. You have to do it. Medicare does not do this for you. The counselors does not do this for you. You have to contact your Part D or Medicare Advantage plan by phone. Enrollment cannot be done at the pharmacy or by calling Medicare. Plans must process the enrollment request within 24 hours. So I was also told that, for example, if you decide you want to get on this and you call in, actually they can do it within a couple of hours. And I was told to, that I could state that. So, um, and they must process it within 24 hours, okay? Enrollment can be done between October 15th and December 30th to start with January 1st medication fills. Please do not confuse this with open enrollment. Okay, this is separate. Open enrollment ends December 7th. Again, open enrollment ends December 7th. The Medicare, the enrollment for the Medicare prescription payment plan ends December 30th. Enrollment can be done any time of the year and start within the same month. Members can decide to disenroll from the payment plan any time by contacting the plan. Okay, now I'm gonna stress a few things with this because um, just by you know doing the presentations help me to pull out nuggets uh, that are resourceful for you uh, just by questions that are asked by others. So MPPP, how are payments made? Part D plans will, bim, will bill member monthly, okay? So you get your, your Part D plan monthly payment, okay? The MPP monthly invoice is sent separate from the monthly premium bill and must be paid separately. When I tell you how important this is, you know, I already had someone to say, well, if I pay one, then no, if you don't pay your monthly premium bill, you you're going. It's it's not going to be good. Okay, it's separate. The payments have to be made separately. Okay, no payment will be made by members when filling prescriptions for drugs at the pharmacies. When pharmacy puts drug claim through to the plan for covered drug, a zero cost share will show. Okay, so if you decide you want to get on the MPPP plan, right, your monthly cost is what you are billed. When you go to the drugstore, it's zero because remember that monthly amount is covering the $2,000 out of pocket. Okay, I hope that if that's not clear, please let me know. So if you're on this plan, when you go to the drugstore, even if your um, drugs are, say, for instance, $600 normally, it would still be the zero because you are in this plan and you are paying it over, over an extended number of months. Okay? Again, that is totally up to you and it must be done through the, um, through the company, not through Medicare. All right.
continuing from 2024 into 2025. All insulins on plans, formulary. Again, here we go. The, you keep, you're going to hear this word a lot. The plans formulary must have copay no greater than $35. Now, there are different types of insulin. So you need to make sure that you enroll in a plan that has your insulin covered. Deductible cannot be applied to insulin copays. All Medicare drug and health plans can choose which insulins to cover on their drug list or formulary. $35 does not apply to disposable insulin pumps, example, Omnipod, or to non-insulin diabetic drugs such as Ozempic or Nirvana, okay? And so just wanna make sure that you understand it's very important to make sure that your insulin is covered by the plan that you choose. All approved adult vaccines must be on plan formulary with a zero cost sharing. For example, shingles, the flu, um, COVID shots. So all approved, all approved is the key word. Adult vaccines must be on plan formulary with zero cost sharing. All right, so Medicare uh, Plan Finder, this is at medicare.gov, and this is a tool that you can use yourself or we can assist you, uh, our counselors can assist you. So you log in and you create an account, access your information anytime, anywhere. You can find health and drug benefits, find and compare your plans in your area, find um, care providers, and you can also get some, have someone to talk to. So the first thing you would do is go to www.medicare.gov. After creating an account, you'll be able to see all of your claims. I thought that was interesting. For parts A and B, hospital and medical. You'll see a list of your medications already uploaded if you have a Medicare Part D plan. And guess what, guys? As with everything else, there is a how-to YouTube video on how to navigate uh, in this tool, the Medicare tool. How to compare plans, okay? Again, our, my goal today is to empower you, um, to give you the best options um, and also to empower you to be able to choose the best plan for yourself. So here are a few things to look at. We've gone over them, so I'm gonna just go quickly. Coverage, are my drugs covered? I'm not on Medicare yet. Are there, are there any situations that allow me to join outside of the enrollment? Um, so I'll talk about that. Medicare is three months before you're 65, the month you turn 65, and three months after. If you are on uh, some types of disability, there is a dual enrollment, but that applies to those who may be on disability, Medicaid, and can have Medicaid, Medicare. Okay. Other than that is 65. Um, coverage. So you wanna look, are my drugs covered by the plan? Are there any restrictions? Some have prior authorization, step therapy. So what is step, does, that, does anyone know um, need to know what step therapy is? Before I move on, I don't wanna uh, assume that you know. So step therapy is they may say you have to try this drug or this before you tr have this one. And then there, sometimes it's two steps, sometimes it's three steps. So you want to make sure that um, your drug, you know, is not in that step therapy. Cost. Look at premium copays deductibles. Compare total yearly drug and premium cost. Okay, and you'll see that in the tool. I'll show it to you in a few moments. Convenience. Is my pharmacy in plans network? I I get asked this question a lot. Does do uh do the plan does the plan offer a mail order? Not every plan offers mail order, just so you know. 
So that's a question you definitely want to ask if that's the way you like to get your prescriptions. Have preferred pharmacy with lower co-pays. Then you want to look at coordination. Will it work with my other health or drug benefits? Okay. New for 2025, review costs if you enroll into payment plan to see if it's a good option. It may not be a good option for you. Okay, so you've heard the terms. Now we want to show you on the chart. I am 68 and I work full time. I'm on my company's health and drug plan. Do I need to enroll? Okay. Here's what we tell everyone, enroll. We, you should enroll as soon um, as you can because if you do not enroll, and I know you said you have a drug benefit, um, but there are penalties. If you are not, if you do not enroll, because a lot of people say I'm healthy, I don't need the drug plan, I don't need to enroll. But what happens is if you don't, if you don't have health coverage, Listen to what I'm saying. And you, all of a sudden, you find yourself in a predicament, unfortunately, that you have to take medications. When you go to get that Part D, you will have to pay a lifetime penalty for your uh, Part D for the time that you did not have it. Okay, which is, yeah, we had someone, we were, um, one of our instructors was telling us about someone who was 85 and they were healthy. They weren't taking any medications. Then all of a sudden they needed it, but they didn't have that coverage and they had to go back to 20 years and um, it's calculated, you know, by percentage and they had to pay that um, uh, for the rest of their life. Okay. So you do want to uh, check into it. Okay. Um, estimated total drug premium cost. That's at the top when you go into the plan finder. CVS Pharmacy is the preferred. So you can see that it always shows the CVS Pharmacy, the preferred in-network in pharmacy. This is where we talked about the total yearly drug and premium cost. It is $2,600. This is just an example. When will you, when you'll meet your deductible, January, 2025 when you will reach the maximum out-of-pocket limit, September 2025. And this is just, like I said, an example, okay? So again, let me repeat that so it's clear. If you do not have coverage, as I stated, we I gave an example. There was a man that was 85 years old. He never had Part D coverage. And he got ill when he turned um, 85. He had to go back. 20 years and they calculate what the penalty is because he did not have credible drug coverage. Okay. So your employer is considered credible um, drug coverage. And here's what I would tell you immediately. You want to make sure there's no lapse in your coverage. So if you, when you know you're not no longer going to work, you want to make sure that you um, go in and you make sure you, apply and do what you need to do so that when one ends, the other will begin and there's no lapse of coverage. Okay, hopefully that made that clear. All right, here we go. What if your prescription is not covered by the plan you choose? Once open enrollment is over, you are locked into your plan for the year. You and your doctor should work with the plan, switch to a similar drug that is on the formulary, okay? If you cannot switch drugs, your doctor can request an exemption to have it covered. If you cannot switch drugs, your doctor can request an exemption to have it covered. If plan denies your exemption a request, um, you can uh, request an appeal. Change plan to a plan that covers your drug during the next annual enrollment or special enrollment, okay? So again, you are locked into your plan for the year. And that's why, again, we stated earlier, make sure that you, you know, again, you can't control, you know, in, uh, medications you may have to get on after you pick, but you can look at the ones you're taking now and make sure that 
you are making a choice based on those drugs that are on the plan formulary. All right, Natasha. Okay, back to this again. And we want to make sure we all have it. So Medicare, original Medicare, part A, hospital, part B, medical, part D, prescription drug coverage or other credible, there we go, credible drug plan, okay? Um, and Medicare Advantage, HMO, PPO. So we see it again. All right, Natasha. Oh, here's our friend. Everyone knows this space. <laughs> Everyone has seen these ads probably more times than we'd like to uh, to see them. Um, ad, TV ads offering extra benefits in Medicare. The plan also includes dental, vision, hearing, and prescription. We've seen it. These ads link you to insurance agents selling Medicare Advantage plans. Again, these ads link you to insurance agents selling Medicare Advantage plans. Okay. What is Medicare Advantage? And it's really important that you're educated on the difference and before uh, we end the presentation, we'll actually, you know, give you information. Well, who should stay on uh, original, and you know, and who should stay on? Who should go to Advantage? Okay, just for you to consider the options. So, what is Medicare Advantage? It's structured as HMO or PPO. What does that mean? Insurance companies contract with Medicare to provide your benefits. You must get all medical services and drugs through the plan. You may have to use specific doctors, hospitals, and labs, not just doctors, but hospitals and labs also. I wanna stress that because we had, I had a, a, um, a, a, a participant asked that question and they were under the impression that it was just pretty much doctors, but it's that's not true. When it comes to HMOs and PPOs, you may have to use do specific doctors, hospitals and labs. You may need referrals for services and specialists. And here's the pro, you may get benefits not covered by original Medicare, such as eyeglasses, hearing aids, dental services and gym discounts. This is always a very large part of conversation where we're in person um, because people have differences of opinion. And again, we say that you have to select what's best for you. You know, even if it offers the eyeglasses, hearing aids, dental services, gym discounts, you need to look at, okay, but what are those discounts? Um, you know, we had a person that say they took uh, the, the plan thinking they were getting all these different benefits, but still it didn't, it still didn't benefit as much as when they were on the original. So again, compare, really do your homework. Okay. Medicare Advantage is not supplements to Medicare. No claims go to Medicare. All claims are processed by the plan. Medicare Advantage Overview. Plans offer differ by county. Very important. We're in Monmouth County. Those in Ocean County will may have different plans. Middlesex County, Mercer County, different plans. So the plans are different. They differ by county. Premiums range from zero to $157 per month. Many of them have zero premiums. Some plans also offer reduction in members Part B premiums, okay? Some people love it, some people don't. Again, it's really up to you what best suits your needs. If a plan has a premium close to $100, it's best to look at a different Medicare plan or consider a Medigap policy. Some plans have deductible before plan will pay. Plans ch um, charge you a copay every time you use a service until you reach your maximum out of pocket. Look at this amount, please. $9,350 to $14,000. Then plan covers 
100%. Sample of supplemental or extra benefits offered by some Medicare Advantage plans. We've gone over some of them and you may be uh, familiar with some. Some dental benefits. People should be aware of them are offered by the private sector. sector. Yes, it's very true. It is. It is. That's a very good point. Let me just read that and open up the uh, chat box. People should be aware that Advantage plans are offered by the private sector and are designed to undercut traditional Medicare. You'll pay more money for less services as a profit-making operation. So that is, um, that's coming from Patricia. Thank you for your input. And some people do say, though, that they feel it's better for them. So again, we're not here to push one or the other. We're here to give you the information so that you can make an educated choice for yourself. So the dental benefits, um, home delivered meals after hospital stay, a hundred to four hundred dollar spending card, transportation, worldwide coverage, travel benefit, and cash rewards for getting wellness services like flu shots and mammogram. I know um, someone said in one of my presentations, they got a $60 check for getting um, a mammogram. And here we go again. Check each plan summary of benefits for details. Okay. Next. Questions to ask before enrolling in a Medicare Advantage plan. Okay. Are my doctors and hospitals in the network? What are the co-pays, co-insurances for each service, doctor's visits, outpatient procedures, specialists, physical therapy, medical tests, hospital stays, medical equipment? Okay, again, we're trying to give you the best, trying to educate you so you know what to ask, what to look for, okay? Out-of-network coverage and cost. So I had someone um, in, another power, in another presentation, um, they have a Medicare Advantage plan, but now they like going to a different doctor outside. So guess what? There is a cost for that. Um, so you need to look at that out of network coverage and costs. Are referrals required? Are my drugs covered? Cannot enroll in separate Medicare Part D plan when enrolled in a Medicare Advantage plan. Please note that, okay? Will it affect my employer or union coverage? Please note that if you are, someone said that they're still employed, you know, um, the Medicare Advantage plan, but, and, and this is actually afterwards, like for people that have, um, you know, benefits from their employers, their employer also, please check to make sure that it will not affect your employer or union coverage, okay? I've heard so many different stories regarding that. Um, there was a person who got out of, our, in our last training, um, there was a person who was um, a state employee and unfortunately they got out and they didn't get back in in time and they weren't accepted back into the, their um, employer program. So you do want to be really careful, okay, and make um, wise decisions. Details on eyeglasses and dental coverage. What if I travel out of state? That's a big one. And we'll talk about that in a few more slides, within a few more slides. Okay, enroll in a Medicare health or prescription drug plan by enrolling. Uh, you can enroll here are the numbers. Okay, here are the numbers. Here's the information for you. Um, enrolling in a new plan will disenroll you. Listen carefully, this is what I was saying. Enrolling in a new plan will disenroll you from your previous drug or health plan. It will disenroll you. Um, if you have other coverage, like from an employer or a union, check with your plan's benefits administrator before making any changes to your coverage. So I hope that helps, you know, because, you know, it's really important if you have um, coverage already that you make sure that you're making, you're making the right phone calls and checking to make sure, you know, um, that you're not going to be without. Very, very important. Okay. Natasha.
All right. What if you enroll in a Medicare Advantage plan and you change your mind? And you change your mind. Okay, here we go. From January 1st to March 31st, you can switch Medicare Advantage plans or leave Medicare Advantage and return to original Medicare with a Part D drug plan. Check first to see if you can get approved for a Medigap policy before leaving your Medicare Advantage plan. Why? Because you are no longer, you're not in guaranteed issue any longer. So when you first, can you go back please, um, Natasha? Thank you. When you first get Medicare, the first three months, then you have the your month and then three months after, you are in a guaranteed issue state, okay? In other words, you cannot be turned down. But once that time is over, and if you are in a Medicare Advantage plan and you want to go return to original Medicare with the Part D drug plan, it says make sure that you can get approved for a Medigap policy before leaving your Medicare Advantage plan, right? Because they can turn you down and because within six months, you can be turned down. And we'll see that again in a few moments. That's very important to note. I saw the question. Thank you, Natasha. I saw the question about the PPOs and the um, the HMO. And the HMO is the health, um, man, a health maintenance organization and a preferred provider organization, PPO, um, are the cost network size and the flexibility of coverage. So, um, you know, usually there's like, some cost difference between the two um, sizes of the um, of the network sizes are a little bit different between the two, um, and one offers a little bit more flexibility um, than the other. But you both both of them have um, network doctors, and both of them sometimes need referrals, um, and you can just check into that. But that's just basic knowledge but you'd have to check further uh, with your with the with the different plans. Okay. Medicare Advantage open enrollment period and we already went through that. Okay, Natasha, the next one please. Some Medicare Advantage plans not renewing, plans in. Now, this is an exception. If your plan terminates you, if you get terminated or the plan ends, um then you you have an, an another enrollment period and we'll talk about that. If your Medicare Advantage plan is not renewing and it's ending 12-31-2024, all members need to take action by 12-31 to enroll in another plan. Aetna, Braven, Humana, WellCare all have some plans that are not renewing. Remember, there are different plans in di under different um, providers, okay? So make check to make sure. Now, little something I found to help one of our patrons told us that you would receive your white envelope. It's an envelope um, from your drug company saying that they are renewing or not renewing. So that information should come and many people have already gotten it. So if you haven't, you may want to check that. Your rights if plan ending, if take no action, you will um, you will be given traditional Medicare Part A and B, but have no drug coverage on January 1st, okay? No drug coverage. Have extended open enrollment until February 28th, 2025 to enroll in another Part D or Medicare Advantage plan. If Medicare Advantage plan is ending, you can return to original Medicare and have guaranteed issue. That's what I was just saying until March 2nd, 2025 to purchase a Medigap policy and not be turned down. Very important, okay? And this is if your plan is ending. Can I switch from a Medicare Advantage plan to Medigap? Only if the following applies. You are in an open enrollment period and we give you those times. You are in good health 
Why do you think it's saying if you're in good health? Because if you're not, you can be turned down, okay? Um, or you are in special enrollment period, lost coverage or moved outside of your service area of your Medicare Advantage plan. If you lost coverage or if you moved outside of your service area of your plan, that puts you back into the guaranteed issue um, enrollment again, okay? Those are the special enrollment periods. Those are the exceptions. All right, Natasha. Now, for those that want to try Medicare Advantage, this is a one-time risk. One time, once, 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 okay? If you cancel a Medicare supplement policy, 1231-2024, to enroll into a 2025 Medicare Advantage plan for the first time, I'll say it again, for the first time, you have one year trial and any time during 2025, you can disenroll from the MA plan and return to original Medicare and enroll in a Part D drug plan and can purchase a Medigap supplement policy and not be turned down. So there's a guaranteed issue there. Only this though, only for the first time. Okay, first time, no risk. You can get back the Medigap policy you had in 2024. If that plan no longer is sold, you can purchase certain Medigaps from any company, okay? Here we go. We've talked about this. We've been seeing this. Um, okay, for Susan's question. Okay, so I'm going to show you that in a moment. So original Medicare, again, is part A and B and D and Medicare supplement, okay? Medicare Advantage, we want you to see all of this. We want you to see it, okay? Natasha? Okay, if you stay with original Medicare and want a Medigap policy, okay? Policies are sold by insurance companies. Cover cost sharing in original Medicare, part A and B, deductibles, co-pays, co-insurance. That's what the purpose, that's the purpose of a Medigap. It, it covers the cost sharing that we talked about earlier, okay? That 20%, it covers that. Um, it covers some Part A and B deductibles. It covers co-pays, okay? It's also called a Medicare supplement insurance. There are 10 standard policies available. So the question that just came in, label plan A through N. Plans of the same letter have the same coverage. So, okay, I'm going to explain this out. So, Raven A, AmeriHealth A, Horizon A, they're the same letter. So, they have the same coverage. However, the premium cost is different. So, the point here. Is one could be 100, one could be 80, one could be 60. I'm just throwing numbers out there, right? So the premium cost is different, but if they're all letter A, they offer the same coverage. Very important. You know, now if you like a certain company, that's fine. And you want to pay more, that's fine, but you're not getting any additional benefits if it's the same letter, because the same letter has the same coverage only the premiums are different, okay? So uh, plan A, B, C, D, E, right? Those plans, and some are not no longer there, so I don't want to call all the plans, but they all are, they have the same coverage, they just cost different, okay? So if, if stay with the reg, original Medicare and want a Medigap policy, you can go to any doctor, hospital, or provider that accepts Medicare in any state. No networks to follow, no prior authorization for procedures, okay? 
That's a huge difference between original Medicare and the Medicare Advantage plan. Tasha, how do Medigap policies work? And here we go. It's you pay monthly premium for Medigap in addition to Medicare Part B premium, $100 to $300 per month based on plan and age. Okay. So you're paying your monthly premium. You'll be paying your Medigap. You're paying your Part D. If you get on the MPPP, you're going to pay that. That's four different payments. Okay. Um, just want to clarify that. Medigap pays claim after Medicare play, pays. All right. Medigap pays claim after Medicare play, pays. Only, um, only covers Medicare services. Company can turn you down for coverage after your first six months with Part B. Okay, I said it earlier. Remember, we've been talking about guarantee, guaranteed issue. Okay, even if you get in to the Medigap, company can turn you down for coverage after your first six months with Part B. All right. Okay. Does not cover prescription drugs. Need separate Medicare Part D prescription drug plan. Premiums increase with age and increase any time of year with state approval. You can keep the policy if you move anywhere in the U.S. Another difference, okay? Another difference between having the traditional original with the Medigap and the Part D versus Medicare Advantage. All right, here is a visual of the chart for the Medigap policies, okay? And you can, I'll give you a few moments to look at it. So if you see plan A, so plan A shows you what's covered, plan B, high deductible plan G, and then there's a plan G, okay? So you can look at that for yourself. Plan G, high deductible in 2024, Policyholder pays $2,800 before the policy pays any claims. Plans K and L pay percentage of Part A and B cost sharing until you spend a certain amount out of pocket. In 2024, the out-of-pocket maximum is $7,060 for Plan K and $3,530 for Plan B. L. Where to get Medigap information? Please call 1-800-MEDICARE and ask for free publication choosing a Medigap policy. Call companies selling Medigaps for premium quote. Charts are available from SHIP and someone asks for the number. There's the number. 1-800-792-8820. Okay, so that's another number. But bottom line is we cover family and children's service, covers um, the Monmouth County area. So um, you'll be directed to, uh, to us for if you need a counselor. Okay, or www.aging.newjersey.gov if a 65 can apply at any time not limited to Medicare annual enrollment period. All right, Natasha. Okay, here's a big question. Should I choose original Medicare or Medicare Advantage plan? Right, everyone asks this question, the big question. Stay with original Medicare if you have health coverage from former employer or union and want to keep it. Kind of touched on that earlier. And I think that's where uh, the confusion may have come in because that's what I was speaking of as far as um, you want to make sure that you keep that and not, you know, and not lose it. So that's very important. So if you have original Medicare and you have health coverage from former employees,
former employer, not you working now, but former employer or union and want to keep it. Stay with original Medicare. If you are a snowbird or travel long periods outside New Jersey. Okay. And stay with the original Medicare. If you want the freedom to go to any Medicare doctor anywhere in the U S. Okay. So look that over and that's what we do. You can keep going to Tasha. It's this is, I know the, uh, the presentation is very long. You can skip that one, please. Yep, keep going. And keep going. Keep going. Thank you so much. Programs to help with Medicare costs. We have Medicaid, Medicare Savings Programs, NJ PAD, and NJ Senior Goal dis Drug Discount. So Family and Children's Service was just awarded uh, the opportunity to now um, help those that are looking to get help with their Medicare costs. We have what we call navigators and our navigators will sit just like um, our volunteer ship counselors will sit with you to help you navigate Medicare our volunteer, our, our paid staff, their navigators, they will help you uh, with the um, application because there is an application for the Medicare savings programs that also um, covers the NJ pad and NJ senior gold drug discount. Who is eligible? Now this is Medicaid, okay? Um, and you have to apply at the County Board of Social Services, not with us, but at the County Board of Social Services. Who is eligible 2024 rates? Monthly income less that of 1,255 1, single, 1,704 married. Assets, you see what the assets have to be, 4,000 single, 6,000 married. Does not include value of your home or car. Medicaid pays all your Medicare costs, all Part A and B items, premiums, deductibles, co-insurance for hospitals, doctors, and tests. Medicaid lowers prescription copay to $1.60 or $4.80 in 2025. And this is New Jersey Family Care Medicaid Program. Medicare, Medicare pays first. Medicaid HMO pays second. Apply at County Board of Social Services. Help paying Part B premium. So specify low income Medicare beneficiary. Okay. And this is for Slim B and qualifying individuals. So what happened was New Jersey raised the eligibility amount by $10,000. There are many people who did, did not, uh, were not eligible last year that are eligible this year. So there's a push to get the awareness out and to get people to apply for the savings programs. So if you need help with that, please don't hesitate to reach out to Family and Children's Service. And you can name hotline number or Natasha, if you could please put in our 732-222 uh, number, please. Okay, so help paying Part B premium. Um, who's eligible? Monthly income less than $1,695 for single and $2,300 if married. Resources less than 9,430 single, 14,130 married. If you qualify for either of these programs, you will net an additional $174 in your social security check. And you apply at this number or by um, going to the website.
Now, New Jersey Pharmaceutical Assistance to the Age, that's NJPAD and Disabled Program, NJPAD, must meet 2024 income limits. And this is what I was referring to. The income limits have um, increased by 10000 So less than $52,142 a year, and it gives you the monthly breakdown, single, or married less than the fifty nine thousand two hundred nine a year, about per month. Um, NJ Pad members pay no more than five dollars for generic drugs, seven dollars for brand name drugs, and that is why, if you remember, if you go back, why it says it really is. Um, if you're on, if you're approved for these programs, then you wouldn't need the MPPP, the Medicare uh, payment plans. Okay. PAD pays premium for Part D plan. No Part D deductible, copay, or donut hole. And here's the number where you can apply. New Jersey Senior Goal. The eligibility for this program also increased by $10,000 and it's NJ Senior Goal Prescription Discount. Senior Goal Income Eligibility Higher Than for PAD. The income limits are stated, $62,142 a year for singles and $69,209 a year for married. And it gives you the monthly breakdown. You pay $15 plus 50% of remaining costs for each drug. You must be enrolled in Part D drug plan. Senior Goal does not, does not pay Part D premium. Okay. And we've seen this over and over, and hopefully now you have a better understanding of Part A, Part B, the supplement, Part D, or a Medicare Advantage plan. HMO, PPO, Natasha. Okay, protect yourself from scammers. Medicare will not call you and it will not ask for your bank information or social security number, okay? Will not, you know, and let me just share this with you. I There are scams out there. Unfortunately, um, it happened to, you know, my mother, I was caring for her and, um. I would tell her, you know, mom, please don't take these calls. And one day she took the call and she said, well, you know, they were calling for Medicare and they asked me and she gave them all her information and she was scammed. And thankfully, thankfully, our her bank caught it and they flagged it. But do not give your bank information or your social security number. Okay. Protect your Medicare number the same as you would your credit card. Someone asked me at one of our presentations why they changed from the social security number to the A and the long number. Well, that's why, because, you know, people use the social security number to scam, but you also want to protect that Medicare number because it's the same thing as, as a credit card is even as your social security number. Medicare will not send a representative to your home. They will not. These are insurance agents trying to sell you health care policies. I think someone, you know, kind of referred to that earlier, okay? Medicare will not send anyone to your home. Where to get help? Medicare.gov, contact the plan, call 1-800-MEDICARE, www.aging.newjersey.gov, Call the Medicare Information Line, New Jersey SHIP Hotline, and we also gave you our hotline number. And that is where to get your help. Thank you.